I'm excited to provide you folks tuning in with some fundamental concepts around building processes that can drive efficiency within your respective organizations. Digitizing and automating a process is a big hurdle that many of us maybe have already started to address or are at least working toward moving to, to adapt to today's modern workplace. Technology is moving faster than ever and organizations are adopting the use of electronic workflows to get that competitive edge or simply provide better customer experiences. When designing a digital workflow, we should definitely consider the benefits of collecting data electronically that can be leveraged for further analysis and insight creation to impact future business decisions. Analyzing the important data from your processes can allow you to identify areas for process improvement, significant cost reductions, and increases in efficiencies within your business operations. Reporting and analytics can be a very useful tool and should be considered or built into each given process when you are transitioning into a digital work environment. With this in mind, today we're going to start off by sharing a few things to keep in mind through the planning and design phases of building a business process to maximize reportability. We will then talk a little bit about laser fiche forms or business processes and provide some tips when designing a laser fiche. And lastly, we're gonna finish with a quick example of a travel request process to tie in some of the things we discussed throughout the presentation. So let's start off with a quick definition on what a business process is. Here we define it as a set of activities or tasks that accomplish a specific organizational goal. So that could be hiring new employees, managing contracts, issuing reimbursements, and much more. And let's say that current process we are looking at is extremely manual and inefficient. For that reason, we are considering the use of process automation tools to revamp and accelerate that process. You may ask, where do we start? As a process owner or project manager, the first thing you really need to do is get a strong understanding of the process you are trying to transform and start working towards a process map or outline of the process in its current state. Here on the slide, we see an outline of a sample order submission process that starts off by purchase orders being sorted. Then depending on the amount of the purchase order, it either gets routed to a sales VP or to one of the sales managers for approval. And once approved, the accounting clerk processes the purchase orders. So in order to get a thorough understanding of all the ins and outs of the process we're looking to transform, perform an in-depth discovery on the process. Gather requirements from your colleagues that are involved, starting from the people that work most on the process, and then working up the chain to the managers. Typically, Frontline staff will be able to give you the most accurate depiction and breakdown of each step required to accomplish a task. They'll be able to tell you who is involved and even some of their pain points throughout the process. Then when we work our way up to management and executives, they can provide further insights and validate the key steps of that process. After you're able to put together a detailed outline of the current state process, Analyze your findings and start to highlight those gaps or inefficiencies that you see in the process and work towards redesigning it to be more customer centric. What we want to avoid is taking the current state process that has room for improvement and not making it effective from the get go. As a business that would increase the time to value on any software implementation and hinder you from optimizing your productivity or reducing costs. So we want to make sure to seize the opportunity and set us up for success or a quicker path to our desired outcomes. In our discovery process, we also wanna keep reporting in mind. It's important to measure the things that we are looking to improve or the goals that we are looking to attain. So begin to formulate the project success criteria and really define how we wanna measure success. What are the desired outcomes of the project? And what is our unit of measurement? Is it time saved, cost savings, a percentage more of registrations for an event, percentage more of new hires in a given year. You also want to think about this team's KPIs or OKRs. How is the current process making it difficult to hit those objectives? These key performance indicators are quantifiable measurements used to evaluate the success of a process in meeting objectives for performance. 
Tracking this data in your processes will allow you, your team to measure your progress and make the necessary adjustments to stay on track to meet your business goals and overall objectives. Lastly, try splitting out the different stages or milestones of a process and think about what moves things from one stage in the process to the next. Adding these stages will help in creating operational reports that track things such as the time it takes for the specific task or stages to be completed, or the amount of tasks still within a given stage at a specific time, or the average time that a given stage takes. This reporting can give managers a better understanding of the processes overall health and flag any noticeable inefficiencies that may be hurting your bottom line. All of this is important as it will not only impact our process design, but also get us thinking about the key reports that will help us to see our progress. So as we think about how we can report on a process, it's important to understand the different report types that we have available. Let's talk a little bit about reports such as simple aggregation, operational reports, and insightful reports. First is simple aggregation. This is what most people think of when they think of reporting. These types of reports are useful as it lets you compile all that information collected from multiple sources, summarize it, and maybe put it into your preferred visualization, whether that be a line graph, pie graph, column bar. For example, you can create an aggregate report to show the number of cases processed over a particular time period by different caseworkers. Secondly, operational reports. These reports are extremely useful when you want to know more about your processes health. Managers like these type of reports because they're good at displaying analytics around process efficiency and resource allocation. So some examples can be how long a specific task is taking in the process, or maybe which employees have the heaviest workload, translating it to slower processing turnarounds, or which stages of that process are simply running the slowest. These reports can help managers identify any bottlenecks and make the necessary adjustments to ensure their processes are optimized and tasks are being completed on time. Lastly, insightful reports, which can also be looked at as predictive analytics, provide understanding into larger scale trends and ultimately allow you to use data to predict future outcomes. These types of reports are very much a hot topic and deemed as critical critical to many executives around the world. To give you an example, an insightful report can provide data such as the overall expenditures on various types of items by different departments over the course of the last year. Such a report can help an executive predict the spending and set the budget for each given department for the next physical year. So these reports give us the ability to make more informed decisions by allowing us to use past data to predict what we anticipate here in the future. Now that we covered a few of the report types, it's also important to think about the reports needed for the different personas within the process. There are many different personas who need to be addressed when creating reports. Today, we will focus on end users, managers, and executives. End users are primarily focused on their part of the process. They ask themselves questions such as, what tasks have I completed? How long is each task taking me? How do I stand in relation to others? Am I doing well or falling behind? Managers are mainly interested in operational reports that share how the process performs as a whole in their particular department and may ask, is my team getting things done? How quickly are they completing their task? Who has the heaviest workload? Where are we at in a specific instance of that process? And executives are more concerned with trends, long-term strategy, and where they're at in hitting their objectives. Executives are forward-thinking, so they're interested in reports that help predict future trends. Make reporting a priority. In order to have the data that can be used for process improvement, I cannot stress more the importance of including reporting as a part of your process design. Instead of waiting a few months after the process goes live to create reports, create the base reports as you design the process. In the discovery phase, make sure to also work with these different personas we just went over to establish the type of reports they need. What is the purpose of this report? 
how do we expect the end user to use it? How do they want these reports to be displayed? When these reports are established, then you could use them to inspire further transformation. Although we hope to get everything perfect on the first try, it's not always the case. Processes are not always set in stone and may require modification as time passes. But what your, once your process is live, we can then leverage reporting and analytics that we have set up to find ways to make it even more streamlined. We don't simply stop after the initial design, but instead we can use data to always try to discover more ways to improve the experience for all stakeholders involved. And again, many processes evolve over time. So with that, reports will also most likely need to evolve. Just make sure you keep track of everything throughout the journey. Create a log of the changes that you are making so that you can properly communicate them to the users who will be looking at the process data. And once you're able to do all your discovery on this process and really get a great detailed understanding of it, then you'll be able to develop a business diagram such as the one we have on the screen here, which is a little bit more detailed than the one that you saw earlier today.